For those of you wondering why I left a right angle triangle in here, it's because I need you to find the hypotenuse of this triangle, this one, just this part. Hi everyone, welcome to another video. My name is Derek Moredi and Karibuni Sana. Today's video is an unscripted video. Usually when I go out to make all of these videos, I usually write down all my thoughts. I write down a script of everything I'm going to say and kind of like recite what it is that I had written down. But today's video is unscripted. I am just coming here to just sort of like add on to things I never said in my last video. So what I want to do in this video is to talk about all the problems associated with a goal-oriented lifestyle. Let's begin with the first problem of having a goal-oriented lifestyle. Number one is winners and losers have the same goals. I want you to think about that for a bit. Like seriously, think about it. Winners and losers all have the same goals. So let me use an analogy here. Let's think of a soccer match. There's a team A, there's a team B. When both teams go to play against each other, they all have one goal, to win that game. At the end of the day, one team will have to be picked as the winner, or one team will win, one team will lose, and we are only dealing with the extreme cases, so they, of course there's going to, there's a chance of both teams coming out with a draw, but let's, let's work with the extreme case here. Okay, so let's assume Team A wins the game. Does that mean that Team A's goal to win that game was more ambitious than Team B's goal to win the game? I don't know if that makes sense. Is it that Team A's goal was so big or they had such a huge goal to win the game, that's why they won the game? Is it? The answer is a huge no, and this is why. I do not think that Team A won the game because their goal was more ambitious than Team B's goal to win the same game. I think Team A applied a better strategy. They had more practice probably. They had better teamwork or they were just, you know, they were a much stronger team than Team B. So many other factors other than the goal of winning was the reason why Team A won the game. This basically means that Team A took time to implement some systems that enabled them to, you know, beat the odds and win that game. I think at the very end of the day, what I am simply saying is that a lot of us in the world have the same goals. I mean, think about it, a lot of us want to be successful. The difference may be that our definitions of success are different but that goal is the same throughout. And it's like a global thing. Everybody wants to be successful. Your goal of wanting to be successful is not what makes you successful. It is the things that you do every single day that get you to your definition of success. It is the systems and habits that you develop that get you to success. Just as it is the same habits and systems that you employ that lead you to your failure. We all have the same goals. Winners and losers all have the same goals. Second reason you should probably avoid a goal-oriented life is that goals are very momentary. So let's talk about one of the one of the things I have a very difficult time doing, which is keeping my room organized, right? So usually when I decide to clean my room, I require to you know, gather a lot of energy and a lot of effort and mentally prepare myself to go clean it because it's just very, very disorganized, right? So the goal usually is I start at 9 a.m. and finish by 12 p.m. around that time. So once I have done that and I have cleaned and organized that room, my goal has been achieved. But it does not mean that because I organized my room at that point that my room will remain organized for the rest of my life. That's why after every two weeks, I have to gather that energy over and over again. Once you have accomplished a goal, that's it. So in my case, I 
need to get over the deadbeat habits that I have that keep on making my room a mess. Therefore, I have to adopt some habits to kind of keep that room organized. I have to develop systems that I will put in place so that consistently my room can remain organized. Goals keep happiness away. James Clear uh, talks about goals having an either or conflict. And what he simply means is that with goals, it is either you're successful and you're happy or you're not successful and you're disappointed. In my previous video, I talked about a season in my life where I felt directionless and purposeless. And when I think when I, when I was thinking about it, I was really just unhappy. I couldn't find a way to be happy in the present moments with the things that I was doing because there were things that I aspired to that I was not able to accomplish and therefore I was disappointed. I was consistently putting happiness away because I hadn't achieved a goal. By this point, I should have already convinced you why a goal-oriented lifestyle is probably not the best approach to live your life. But you're looking at me like you're not convinced. Sawa, let me hit you with the last one. Let's see if you can handle it. Watch out to one. Goals will kill your purpose. Goals will also kill your motivation. Goals will kill your determination. And goals make you a lazy sack of potatoes that eats, sleeps, and binges on Netflix all day, every day. In short, I'm calling you fat. Listen, if you, if you watch Netflix and eat at the same time, listen, think about your life. After quarantine, who will recognize you? Just go outside, take a walk, jumping jacks, press up skidogo, kimbia, jogging, something, something, do something. You can't be, you can't be fat. Always go fat. Listen, you can't be fat. The fourth problem with a goal-oriented lifestyle is that goals kill purpose. And the way to think about it is after you, you have accomplished your goal, um, what keeps you pushing further? What keeps you working after you've accomplished that goal when you think about it this is this is kind of the reason why a lot of people stop doing or stop working on whatever it is they are doing after a goal has been accomplished i mean think about it after you've reached if it's a workout routine and you've reached the weight that you wanted not very many people work beyond that or not many people have the motivation to go beyond that now, having a system on the other hand would be more helpful because it is something you're doing on a regular, it's something you're consistently doing, and with systems, since the system exists, it's easier to hit more goals, if you think about it. Well, when I think about it, it just makes more sense. So, maybe I'll just quickly go through some of those problems with goal -oriented li uh, a goal-oriented lifestyle. Um, one is winners and losers have the same goals goals are momentary goals keep happiness away and goals kill people's purpose i wanted i wanted to actually just uh like give you guys a quote i think this will also put things into perspective um goals help you win the game systems will keep you in the game goals are short term while systems are long term uh and finally another another sort of quote neka commitment to process determines your progress and um yeah that those two quotes kind of put things into perspective goals are there for the short term systems will help you in the long term goals will uh, help you in the game while systems will keep you in that in the game for the long run so yes guys uh this is the end of this video I'm sorry about my fat comments if you felt I was uh, body shaming you, but being fat is just being fat. Bye.